Hey, welcome to our special meeting um, date, May 19th, 2021. The time is 5.05 p.m. Monica, could we please uh, get roll call? Roll call. Council Member Soto? Present. Council Member Moran? Present. Council Member King? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Garcia? Present. Mayor Aguilar? Present. For the record, council members, Mayor Pro Temp, and the mayor are in, in attendance. Thank you, Monica. Could we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Ready, begin. You guys please remain standing for a moment of silence for our military members and first responders. Thank you. Okay, guys, first uh, we have a, a presentation. Um, I think our presenter is going to be Dora Westerland. Go ahead and approach. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor Aguilar. And I would like, on behalf of the Fresno Area Hispanic Foundation and our board of directors, I would like to thank all of you council members. Uh, for um, being so welcoming on the day of our event about two weekends ago. And specifically thank uh, the city manager, Jose Antonio, and uh, uh, Council Member Moran uh, for being so helpful on that day of the event and be prior to the event. And of course, the day of the event, uh, I saw a lot of pictures where you were all there helping um, folks on getting the, um, the hotspot. So um, I just want to let you know that there is 80 families that benefit from this hotspot. And we're so excited to share that we continue to get phone calls and we are still working on, on helping a lot of families that are going to be getting this hotspot. So thank you so much. We are um, thrilled to be here. We, um, uh, we're, th we're thinking that Livingstone is kind of our, our city that is very close to our heart, but thanks to all of you that have opened the doors to us. So thank you so much. Uh, and today we are going to be presenting um, some, we, the day of the event, we had some ruffles. There were two bikes and one iPad. And the winners are here with us today. And I want to announce that the winner for this iPad, and I hope that we can take a picture over there far away with the, the recipients, Alia Aguilar is the winner of the iPad. Alia? All right. So if the council and the mayor and the council can go down there and take a photo oh, with can, the, can we the do person. That? Yes, absolutely. Okay, perfect, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Come in. And then we have uh, two bikes, and the winners are Eva Garibay. Eva, are you here? Yee! This is, this is your bike, and we brought your protective gear as well. So if you could please stand over there. And then we have uh, our other winner, Omar Palominos. Come on over, please.
Congratulations, everybody. I'll pass the mic around, but real quick. Um, on behalf of the City Council um, and the City of Livingston, thank you, everybody, for this great program and opportunity. Thank you very much, Mayor and Council members. We appreciate this opportunity to provide this uh, nice uh, um, raffle to, to this nice kid. So thank you so much. Yeah, th I appreciate thank you it. for considering Livingston for your program. And I think it's, it was a great program to benefit our most uh, needed uh, community members, especially the children. Uh, obviously, that's a big concern uh, regarding uh, access to internet. So thank you for considering Livingston. Thank you for all your work you do, not only in Livingston, but in other areas. So I re really appreciate it. Thank we'll you. you thank you very much. Have a good day. Thanks. And then I, just, I would just inform that in regards to the custom uh, color of the bikes, was that was something the children uh, chose, correct? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you so much. Thank you. So we're going to go ahead and move on. At this moment, we're going to go ahead and begin our workshop. Um, our uh, finance director will be it's a consent. taking the lead. We have a consent item. Oh, there's a consent item. Thank you, Monica. So we do have a consent agenda. One item, ratify warrant registered dated May 12, 2021. Council? I move to approve. We have a motion by Council Member Samaran. Do we have a second? I'll, sec I'll second it. We have a second by Mayor Potem Garcia. Can we get a roll call, Monica? Roll call. Council Member Soto? Yes. Council Member Moran? Yes. Council Member King? Yes. Mayor Pro Tim Garcia? Yes. Mayor Aguilar? Yes. Motion approved by a vote of 5 0. Thank you, Monica. So we're going to go ahead and move on to our budget workshop, uh, which is item number three proposed budget fiscal year 2021 2022. Um, Mr. City Manager Jose Ramirez, could you please identify who's here in regards to the department heads um, attending? Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, we have our department head in public works, Anthony Cheruria. We also have our department head in the police department, Chris Soria. We have Brian Avis, who's representing our uh, police, I mean our fire, sorry about that. <laughs> I knew you were gonna like that one. And then we also have, of course, Vanessa, who's representing our finance department here. Oh, and then we also have uh, Leticia here, who is our city clerk, so thank you for being here. Uh, and we have our treasurer back there. She's in their little hat back there. Okay, fantastic. Well, Council, thank you very much for the opportunity. This is going to be the first of a couple of workshops, and then, of course, we will also have another uh, action uh, item on, on the agenda. So, so the public will have three opportunities to comment on this budget, and we're... Uh, we would like to present a balanced budget. Of course, the council has an opportunity to uh, make suggestions, give different policy directions. And so there's, this is an opportunity to, uh, you know, formally or informally communicate your desires. And of course, the public also has an opportunity to, to chime in. So Vanessa will start us off with a power pro presentation. Again, this is our first budget workshop. I'll say, uh, I'll say real quick before we move on. Um, I'm sorry, I apologize. We uh, skipped actually the citizen comments section of our of our meeting. So at this moment, I would like to open for citizen comments um, at this special meeting. Uh, members of the public wishing to address the council for any matter on the agenda may do so at this time. Uh, no, under the provision of California Government Code, the City Council is prohibited from discussing or taking action on any item not on the not on the agenda. Comments are normally limited to three minutes. Uh, stated though previously by the city manager, uh, public will have an opportunity to um, also um, make comments regarding the budget workshop. I don't see any or hear any comments from the public, so we're going to go ahead and move on uh, to our workshop. Thank you. Perfect. 
Good evening, um, council members, mayor, um, city staff, members of the public. I'm Vanessa Portillo, finance director, and um, like our city manager shared, this is the budget workshop number one of um, many uh, other opportunities for our public, our residents, our um, council members um, to have the chance to review and, um, and look into what we are, we city staff is proposing and recommending to uh, adopt as a uh, budget. Twenty twenty, I called it a um, a year like no other. Um, you know, council, in anticipation of putting together the tables and the charts and the numbers that I was going to bring over to to you for review tonight, um, I just couldn't help but to reflect on what we had uh, endured and what we had gone through in the year twenty twenty. So um, I tried looking for a caption, a quote, or something that would. Um, resemble or kind of speak to what um, what 2020 looked like for us going through the middle of the pandemic and going through like many difficult decisions as far as how we were spending our money and um, making decisions on revenue shortfalls and so forth. And I came across this picture that um, really just spoke to me and I will let you know why. Um, for some reason, um, to me, that's how kind of 2020 felt. Uh, we were that phone booth right there in the middle of everything happening to us. Every kind of city mandate, any kind of guideline, state, anything that had to do with the pandemic or anything that it had to be related with our city revenues, it was just like, it just kept coming at really, at the speed of light. And um, I just wanna say that through the closures, the mandates, the guidelines, Everything just worked out, and we were able to work through it. And um, as I, I'm building the budget, and I'm putting these numbers together, um, and we start seeing some signs of recovery in our revenue sources, um, it just makes me think also that just like that phone booth in the middle of a street, um, while well, everything happened, we were a very close community. We worked together. We were very, I, I believe our community, is, it's one that helps each other and it's a generous community. Community, And those were just qualities that have allowed all of us to continue to stand just in the middle and whether that, um, that craziness that it seemed at times of 2020. So with that, I would like to acknowledge our city council, um, our leadership, and uh, for steering the ship, um, any direction we were given through 2020. Um, but also I wanted to take a mo moment to thank all of our staff um, that even on the most uncertain circumstances, their call for duty and service never went away. Our staff continue patrolling. They continue maintaining our parks, streets, facilities. They continue answering the phones and helping our customers. So for that, I am very thankful and honored to work and service your community and our community. In this budget overview, we are going to take a look at just as a reference for our residents that may not be too familiar with our budget book. So we will look into the contents of our budget book. Uh, we're going to go through some budget terminology. Um, we will go through just a, a graph of what the budget process looks like and um, some highlights. In, this, um, in our highlight section, we will um, talk about the general fund, we will talk about some departments that receive support from the general fund, we will look into our, um, our enterprise funds as well, and uh, we will look into our next steps, or what I have also called our um, challenges and opportunities, because there are many, uh, which is, which positions us, the city, in a, in a really in a really good place. Um, I want to make note that our budget is available online um, in our website. It's um, cityoflivingston.org. So anyone that uh, may want to pull the book contents of our budget, it is available to um, our residents, the public, and anybody. 
the budget book. Um, the budget book has six different sections. Um, it has an introduction, and uh, which uh, will, in that introduction section, you will find a transmittal letter. Um, it will have a brief summary of what we are, um, how we're looking as far as our budget, um, the, bu the state of the budget for the city, some key, um, some key, thank you, some, some key items that we um, should look into as far as like some challenges, some opportunities, and so forth. We also have in this introduction section an executive summary for um, our readers to have somewhat of a, a high level overview of what our general fund and our enterprise funds um, look like through the year. And, um, and then we also have the history of the city of Livingston included in this section. Um, we have our fund descriptions, which um, it just describes the functions of each one of the funds or like each one of the buckets of money that um, help us put programs for the community, for our city. We have some budget summaries, which are high level revenue and expenditure um, charts or tables that uh, will hopefully um, can, can, can easily describe this is how much money certain funds are allocating for personnel, for maintenance, for um, debt service or capital projects and so forth. Um, we have our operations section, which goes into the detail of every department um, and what the departments are budgeting for each one of their major expense categories. We have a section for projects, vehicles, equipment and improvements. It just, it's, it's a highlight of the, um, any major projects and the funding source for these projects. And our miscellaneous section, which we, um, and we include um, information from the city, demographics, and so forth. Some budget terminology that we will be using through this uh, budget workshop. Um, when we talk about our city, we talk about a full service city, which means that most uh, services are provided in house. And what, what I mean by most services is most essential services. Um, those are police, water, um, and sewer services. Um, our revenue types, we have two different types of revenue. We have our discretionary revenue, which is available for, the use, for use at the discretion of our city council. Um, most of our, our taxes, our property tax, sales tax revenue falls into this category, meaning that um, it is at the full discretion of uh, our city council to direct how that money will be spent. Um, <laughs> And then we have our non-discretionary revenue, which means it's just simply um, given to the city with the simple purpose of X, Y, Z um, direction. Say, for example, any grants um, that are specific for a program or project, those funds cannot be taken out and be spent in, um, in any other category other than what they're given to the city for. And you will see a list of some of those funds. Those are, majority of those are like our gas tax money, any assessments that we collect from the uh, landscape and maintenance districts, our benefit assessment districts, and any utility revenue. <clears throat> Within our budget terminology as well, we have, we talk about our expenditures and, um, and we break down in the budget uh, our expenditures into uh, three different um, per, uh, kinds or categories. Our, our first category is our personnel, which is just basically wages and benefits of all of our full-time and part-time personnel. Um, we have our maintenance and operations, which is any other cost that it's not related to personnel that it, it helps continue to run a facility. It could be our utilities, our postage, telephone, maintenance, uh, contract services, and so forth. 
And then we also have our vehicle equipment and improvements, which is any costs related to any specific um, special item or project. Um, for, the, for example, you will see in these categories anytime we budget for the purchase of a vehicle or a forklift or any other major um, improvement. We have our fund balance, which is um, it's just our savings in other terms, any funds, uh, funds excess resources. Um, it could be a sign or unassigned. A sign, it cannot be touched. Um, it is um, set aside for a specific purpose. For example, it, like a pension liability fund balance reserve or any reserves for debt service, or um, it could be unassigned, which is just um, available for the use and at the discretion of the city council. Within our budget process, the budget process, it, it's, it's in order for us to be able to put this book together, we have a couple, it takes a couple of months of preparation. Um, just to give you an overview, we start as early as January with um, some of like our um, early projections, which are most of the um, health benefits and um, any kind of like insurance and workers' comp projections that um, come into our office, and we are able to readily start putting um, coming up with some sort of um, estimates on what our personnel and and and, and um, what our personal expenses would be. Um, normally, we get revenue projections for our t sales tax and property tax in March. Uh, we uh, put the book together and we have a draft by April. Um, we also have our district's budgets that come to council for review and approval uh, sometime in May. And um, and we also try to hold our budget workshops in, 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 in the month of May. Um, with the um, overall um, target of having an approved budget um, by by June of um, by the June time frame, so um, that is our goal. With that, I will um, move forward with our budget highlights. Um, there are some assumptions that we have to take into account when we are building this budget. So um, I have outlined some of the revenue and expense assumptions. Uh, for example, we have um, estimated and we have calculated all of the available estimates that we have on hand for any property and sales taxes and any other revenue sources that uh, will be taking part of the city's budget. We have looked through all of the revenues that were one-time funding, and we have removed those because meaning that they were only available for one year, and those have to be taken out of the budget. And then if the city has been awarded any new grants or any new monies, we, uh, we take those funds into account in order for us to build these projections. Um, in the expense side, uh, we look into the four major components of our expenses. Uh, we look into our salaries and we any known and identified changes in personnel or benefits, we, uh, we come up with uh, an estimate and with a uh, projection. Um, any requested staffing um, items that the departments will um, come forward and share that, that they need more support in, 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 in the means of staffing. We also compute those items. Um, and then we, we take into account any major events. In, the, um, in this budget example, one of those major events are some key retirements that will be taking place in fiscal year 21-22. So um, those are all part of our expected um, expenditures for the budget. We take into account our maintenance and operations, any, um, any known changes in a contract service or um, utility, uh, we, we review those, um, those costs. We uh, do an, run analysis, see if we're trending 
if, if we see our utility costs trending up or so. And for the, for the most part, on any items, if we are not able to um, compute some sort of inflation, we have applied a 2% growth on those expenditures. Um, any projects, we have reviewed anything that was a one-time project. For example, last year we had a roof project for our police department roof, and that's a cost that it's not going to be a cost in this new year. So those are the kind of items that we go through the budget, we remove them. Um, I uh, say another example, we had the purchase of um, equipment for our fire station, and um, that's cost that it's not going to be in this fiscal year, so we have done those one-time items we have removed. And at the same time, if the departments have identified any new projects for their departments, we have included those as well. And then we also have um, included any debt service projections, meaning any uh, loans that we have out outstanding. Right now we have our sewer, our sewer loan, we have a water loan, and then we also have um, the uh, debt service for the HVAC system that, that it was installed. So far, um, as a whole, with all of our revenue sources, and this is just um, all the grants, all the money that the city is expecting to receive, um, we are looking at a total of $42.9 million. And we have identified expenditures of 55 million. Given majority of these expenditures are budgeted into projects, and these projects normally have an outside funding source for them, and that is one of the major um, differences between the revenue and expenditures. Um, however, we are only able to budget the revenue once it's readily available for us to be able to book those items. Some of the major projects that are going to be uh, taking place right now in this budget um, unit, it is, um, we have projects in many different funds. We have projects in the water, in the sewer, in our streets um, funding. You can see some of those. We have at the CDBG sewer line. We have well eight, nine repairs. We have. Um, some improvements on our Hammond and Campbell intersections. We have some projects, so we can do some alley paving, and uh, we also have some meter replacements and equipment purchase for the water and sewer fund. Um, within the general fund, we, do ha we have identified four projects and uh, the purchases of equipment that you will see within our um, budget projections. Some of those projects are for um, the replacement of the dispatch system in our police station, um, a camera replacement as well, and we also have an electric box switch replacement and some miscellaneous equipment in our parks and um, public works department. Any? I will go ahead and move into the general fund. The budget that we're presenting to council and that we have prepared today, it is what we called a balanced budget, which means that our revenues equal our expenditures. And um, you can see here, we have a projection of um, $6.8 million in revenue with um, $6.8 million in expenses. If I take, if I compare and I take those two, we are showing that we have about a $2,000 surplus, which um, we want to also caution that it is a very, um, very small surplus for us to, um, to meaning that any changes in our expense or our revenue could definitely have an impact on that surplus or that estimate. The revenues of the general fund um, 
I have this chart which breaks it down into the different categories. Uh, we can see that four, four million of the $6.8 million in revenue come from some sort of taxes, some property or sales tax. So that is a really heavy component of our city's uh, um, revenue sources just from one source. Um, we have, um, we are projecting to receive about $2.1 million in intergovernmental funding. We have some fines and assessments for 34,000, some licenses and permits for 124,000 and miscellaneous revenue in 322,000. Yes. Um, just real quick, can you give examples of what intergovernmental funding sources are? Sure. Um, some of these are, are grants that the city receives and that come directly to the uh, general fund, but I will pull that up too. Thank you. Um, just, uh, just real quick uh, while you look for that, um, could we get a uh, would this copy of this PowerPoint presentation be available for council and for public viewing as well? Yes, we, we can we can print some out uh, for for council in a couple few minutes here. We'll we'll get those. And as far as is, um, uh, it's available, I think we already updated it on the website. Correct? Um, it's not on the website just yet, but okay. I will definitely post it as soon as we are completed with our budget workshop. Thank you, and it is, I know it is on the booklet. It's BLS. Yeah, yeah, it um, $1.9 million of that 2.1, it's comprised for a VLF, okay. which is the vehicle license fee um, that comes through, um, our, it's, it's part of our property tax component. Just a really quick um, trend analysis for the past uh, three years, uh, we can see that um, our property and sales tax base has definitely had some growth, and also very important between the 2019 actual and the 2020-21 um, adopted budget, those two, um, those two sources or those two fiscal years, if we compare the property tax line or the the taxes line, they're, they're stagnant, they're the same. They're 3.54 $3 million dollars that the city was expecting. However, if you see our 2021-22 proposed budget, we can see that property and sales taxes were projecting some growth, um, and, and that's really good. That is uh, some of the news that I had shared earlier that we are seeing some signs, some signs of recovery. Uh, from the pandemic, what now they're calling the post-pandemic um, growth. Um, so, so we can see that difference right there. Can I ask a question real quick? Yes. While we're there. So if we look at, a, 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 you know, the first three years and then we look at the 21, 22 um, graph, we don't see any of the charges for services section. What is making that change? The, the oh. charges for services se section, it's very small. Okay, so it, so it is there somewhere, but it's so just very tiny. It is very small. So if I go back one slide, you can see the charges for services only make up $21,000. Okay, and in what, our budget. What does that include? Um, some of these charges for services are, I believe they're like our dance permits and our yard sale permits that are like very, very small dollar amounts. I believe like we charge like $10 for okay. a yard sale, for yard sale permit, so right. it's very small. <laughs> All right, thank you. In the expenditures category, we have broken down the expenditures by category first. We will show you a different chart where we uh, break them up by department so you will have a better picture of what the general fund, how the general fund is split between the departments. Um, so you can see that 67% of our expenditures are personnel cost um, at 
Out of the $6.8 million, $4.5 million are spent in um, um, personal services, salaries, wages, pension, and benefits for um, staff members. Um, we can see that $1.2 million is um, spent on maintenance and operations, anything that, um, that, that we need to spend in order to keep the lights on in our buildings. And, um, and then we have some vehicles and improvements at 92,000. We had some debt service that it's budgeted in the general fund. And uh, we also have the projects, which is $125,000, which is the one uh, replacement unit for the um, dispatch in our police department. We have another category, which is called transfers out at $646,000. And transfers out, it means any help that the general fund is given out to other units. In this example, we have four departments right now that receive um, help from the general fund, per se. Um, it is our community development, gas tax, recreation, and our MAPS fund department. So. Um, those four departments make up the $646,000 of general fund support. Our next chart, it, ex it shows the breakdown of the expenditures not by category, but by department. So you can see that um, out of the $6.8 million, uh, 67 percent, it is um, allocated to our police department. We have another 11 percent to our administrative services and followed by uh, public works, parks maintenance, our fire department, um, our elected officials line, of course. Go ahead. You could put, oh, yeah, go and, ahead. Uh, and our transfers out again. Okay, just real quick. Um, I know it does reflect on the full document the actual um, money used towards um, towards the fire department in regards to the uh, the fire fund going to uh, to the uh, county in regards to I know you have it here under six hundred and thirty thousand uh, dollars estimated for fiscal year 2018 2019 uh, is that something that could be updated with the most recent figures um, for the fire department um Budget? Yeah, in regards to the county keeping uh, the fire portion of city, city property taxes. It's on page 86 of the full document. Absolutely. It is uh, the new fire station capital fund, fund 1310. Is, is that the, the fund you are referring to? Uh, just to reflect the actual record. I know you guys have it here in small print at the bottom. Do you see it? I'm um, 86. Oh. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. This is something that um, I, after it printed, we uh, noticed and we will be updating it. It Perfect. is showing a fiscal year 18, 19 dollars or estimates. We will be um, updating it with um, fiscal year 21, 22 estimates, um, which right now, um, page 86 of our budget, it talks about the, um, the piece of property tax that um, our property owners pay and it gets directed to the fire department. It is money that it doesn't come to the city. It, um, it, is, it is redirected to the county um, since the county is the provider of fire services for the city. And um, we are showing here on page 86 that we have an estimated um, Revenue of 630000 it is $875,000, the estimate for this fiscal year. And we will have a chart at, at the end of the presentation as well that we will show that. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. And uh, just to advocate in regards to fire, we have a 1% of our budget going towards fire. But I know in the past, and we had many discussions in regards to needing a second firefighter, full-time firefighter. and. Um, Obviously, that's something that we need to work towards and, and come up with a solution in regards to advocating for a second firefighter here at a, our Livingston Station. And I am hope I get support from the council in regards to, to that in the future. So thank you. 
perfect. On the same token, um, as we look into how much, um, how much of our um, expenditures in the general fund are directed to our uh, police department, we have also, um, we wanted to show uh, Back in 2005, we had adopted a resolution, Resolution 2005-98, which the City Council com committed that we were going to um, we were going to have a 1.5 um, a coverage of officers per 1,000 residents of 1.5. Um, so we put in a chart from the different cities surrounding in the um, Merced County and um, in the current population. Um, so far, we are showing a population growth of 2.8% for this fiscally, for, for this, as of January 2021, 2021. And um, based on the um, budgeted officers that we have for fiscal year 2020, 2021, we are showing that we do meet that um, that commitment that the city council um, wanted to, um, you know, that adopted in, back in 2005. A little bit on the general fund reserves. Um, we can see our actual general fund reserves in as of June, tw uh, June 30th, 2020. Um, it was $2.8 million. And um, we are estimating at the end of this fiscal year, which is very quickly approaching, uh, we're estimating that we will be um, adding another $200,000 to our um, general fund reserves. Uh, so our estimate as of June 30th, 2021, is that our general fund reserve balance would be at 3 million or 3 million 68,000. Um, taking into account the, ex the revenue over expenditures of our projected budget, um, the fact that we, I, I shared with you that we only have a $2,000 surplus that will only change our general fund reserve estimate by $2,000, but um, on, the, on the bright side, we are not chipping away from it. Um, at this rate, um, our general fund reserves represent 45% of our operating expenses. And, in, and, and just to put it into context, if all of our revenue sources were to disappear because some, some circumstance that we wouldn't foresee that we had not foreseen, our general fund reserves could take us over for good solid five months. That's. Just a little bit of a trend overview of the general fund, res uh, the general fund balance um, reserves is, um, we can see it here, my pointer, the, we can see it here, um, our actuals in 2019, we're at 2.6 million, and then in 1920, our actual grew to 2.9 million. We are estimating that we are going to add another $200,000 to our general fund reserves by the end of this fiscal year, on June 30th, 2021, and it will stay basically the same since we're only adding another $2,000 based on our projections. Now that we have gone over the general fund, I will go over some of the, or the four departments that are receiving a, um, a subsidy or receiving support from the general fund. The first one, it's our gas tax fund. <clears throat> we can see here that in fiscal year 2021-22, our gas tax fund is going to require a general fund subsidy of $134,000. It 
it's right here. In order for us to be able to meet all of the expenditure commitments that we are um, that we are incurring in that um, in that fund, and in this fund, the um, major um, the ma major expenditures or the the component or the purpose of this fund it's to do any kind it will take care of any kind of street and uh, road maintenance for the city. In our community development, it is our, it's comprised of our three departments, planning, building, engineering, basically all any kind of, um, any kind of new development or um, building permits and, or, or zoning um, projects, they come through the community development fund um, in fiscal year 21-22 they will be requiring a general fund support of $111,000. And our recreation fund, um, which is all of, our, um, all of our recreation programs, they um, are supported under um, this fund we see that in order for the department to be able to sustain all of the operations that are programmed in the year 21-22, they will require a $336,000 general fund support. Um, we can see that in 2020-21, we faced a lot of the closures for the pandemic, so that support those a lot of those programs were um, were reduced. However, the uh, general fund support was um, still at two hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars. We also prepare a five-year model, a forecast model. Um, in order just to give council um, some idea of, you know, like if we make the decisions we make today, how will those decisions or how will those, um, um, how those directions will affect us in the future. So based on what we have Today, at the rate our expenses are growing and at the rate our, our revenues are expected to grow, we can see that we are presenting a balanced budget in fiscal year 21-22. We also can see that our revenues and our expen expenditures in 22-23 will potentially be at a, at a balance. However, in 23-24, we start seeing that our expenses are going to outpace our revenues, and they start outpacing and chipping away our general fund reserves. Quick um, question. Will you be able to go back and see how you're showing five-year fiscal mode ahead? Can you go back and do the same thing to what it was the last five years? Like historical? Yeah. Absolutely. So that way yes. we can kind of see. Oh, go back five go, years go back five and years. then. Okay, I see. Um, our, we can definitely pull some um, historical information. Okay. Thank you. The next items we have identified as future challenges or opportunities for the city. And we definitely feel that um, the city has some really good opportunities in our revenue um, side. And, you know, depending on what we um, move forward as far as um, adding or reducing or uh, removing expenditures, there's also some, there, there could be, there, there are either challenges or there would be opportunities ahead. Um, one of those opportunities that we have um, presented, um, that we're presenting to you right now, is our tax sharing agreement with the county. Uh, we feel that um, 
we, we have presented this uh, before. We have brought this chart in which we um, had shown um, a proposal that the county had. And the main item in this, propo in this proposal from the county is that within the property tax sharing agreement, which property tax um, is what we are looking at or what we're talking about, the county is also putting in a, a clause in which they would like to have a sharing of sales tax. And that is something that the city has not agreed on, and we're not in agreement. So um, those, uh, we feel that we've, we've also shared this, um, this chart before, in which we can see that if we start comparing, and if we, if we were to look into, um, a, um, into accepting any kind of tax sharing agreement for our sales taxes, over the years, in the long run, the city will be in a deficit. We will be collecting $555,000 of property tax from any new annexed areas where we would be having to pay $634,000 of sales taxes to the county. And that really just doesn't become a good deal. I guess, yeah, as uh, everybody's aware, most of us are aware that we've been trying to negotiate with the county in regards to coming to an agreement. Um, Jose, you want to share a little bit more? Sure, absolutely. So we've, uh, we've been trying to set up some meetings with, with the county with, you know, to restart the negotiations. Um, and uh, in, in reality, we haven't been successful in doing that. So some of the things that staff has been recommending to at least our committee, which we'll, we will then share with the, with the council as a whole, but this is a good opportunity to talk about that. And that is uh, looking at, you know, looking at mediation. Um, first of all, section 99 of the tax code doesn't talk anything about uh, sharing sales tax. Uh, for 130, uh, in order for us to just generate about $70,000, we have to do about 130 million worth of sales within the city. And that sales tax money right now, we actually incorporate in our budget. So for us to give up that $70,000, that would be a really uh, undue hardship for the city. In addition to that, if you go back to the other slide, we're not going to go in, we're not going to go t through the whole tax sharing stuff, but this is important for this budget and and for and the budgets that are going to come for the city for the, you know for forever basically because if we accept some of the uh, uh, elements that the county wants to uh, incorporate in the agreement. It takes us into way into the future, and, and to negotiate those things back, it would be very difficult. But uh, can you go back one slide, just real quick? So, uh, in looking at what the county proposes and what we propose, okay, we, we would like to have, you know, whenever you enter into an agreement, both sides give up something, and you come up with an agreement, okay? So, just some highlights on this. One, the city is the one who spends all the money up front to put in a lot of the uh, infrastructure on properties that haven't been developed. So we think that, you know, we should, we should actually uh, uh, take those aspects into account when we, when we put together the agreement. Number two, giving up our leverage and sending all of our money to the uh, BOE, you know, to the Franchise Tax Board, uh, we lose our leverage. So anyways, those are just some of the components. So. We'll, we'll, we'll be talking about this a little further later, but we at least wanted to highlight and share with you that this has, now next slide, that you can see that there's a direct impact to um, everything that we do here in the city moving forward. So that's why the tax sharing agreement is very, very important. Definitely, thank you. Absolutely. <clears throat> Another item that we have identified as a potential opportunity for the city is our property tax allocation for fire services. We talked about this briefly earlier in our presentation, and um, we just wanted to share. Um, what is this fire, um, county fire um, funds that it's received? Um, the chart on your uh, left, it is a breakdown of the every dollar 
property tax dollar, how it's broken down. And you can see that um, in the green, 19 cents of $1 in property tax, they come to the City of Livingston General Fund. In that blue box, meaning seven cents of the $1 of property tax go to county fire. We have put together the his, this historical chart from 2009-2010, what equated in property taxes collections, um, the county fire piece of it, it was about $437,000. Fast forward to 2020-21, we're looking at 754000 and our estimate for fiscal year 21-22, we are estimating it to be $876,000. It's, um, it's double from 10 years, um, and we feel that it, this is a component in which the city could have some, some opportunities for, uh, for, for new funding for fire services. A quick uh, comment on this section here. Current, right now, one of the things that the county is wanting is for us to uh, actually uh, have one agreement, and of course, we as a city want to have a separate agreement with the county, just as it relates to the fire department. Currently, as you can see, you know, $876,000. In the 1995 agreement, by the way, that has to be uh, uh, revisited and, and redone, it, it splits things up to a 60-40 split. Well, if that's a 60-40 split, then we should we should be allocated uh, 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 that percentage of the 876. Right now, the county is basically taking it all. So again, this is why the tax sharing agreement is important and why we should push towards having our own agreement just standalone with the fire department. And yeah, it's totally it's something I advocated and touched bases with with the uh, staff in regards to making making sure we separate that and have a separate discussion in regards to the fire fund and you're correct it's a 1995 old agreement that needs to be brought up to uh, to current times so thank you for bringing that up appreciate it our next um, item where we have identified some opportunities on the revenue side is through the american rescue plan or arp um, we all know this is a one-time funding, and um, we had shared this at one of our council meetings. Even though there's some current guidelines for this funding, um, we have the items highlighted here um, in, the, in the blue and dark black font, where um, they would have 50000 um, replenishing any unreimbursed um, COVID-19 personnel leave and um, $300,000 re replenishing um, the general fund losses and sales tax revenue last year, uh, we feel that that definitely will have an impact in our revenue sources. Another opportunity that we see um, is User fees. Uh, we have. Um, we know that it, you, the user fees for the recreation department is coming to council soon. Um, we are showing you know um, how much um, funding uh, the general fund supports the recreation department, and we feel that if um, these fees may come to s any changes, any changes upwards. Um, will definitely provide relief to the general fund through the dollar amount that it's currently supporting the, the recreation fund right now. Yeah. Yes. Just real quick. Um, absolutely. I think that should be coming up to council soon. Um, just to advocate for some other stuff that I've always advocated for is the actual grant writer in regards to like future uh, opportunity and of revenue. Um, the city really needs to consider uh, even a per contract or part-time grant writer, because I know we miss out on a lot of opportunities out there uh, in regards to all the departments. Um, you know, I, I touch bases with other elected officials or other jurisdictions, and and there, there are definitely a lot of a lot of grant opportunities right now, especially to COVID. Um, so definitely need to consider that. 
like I said, it doesn't have to be a full-time grant writer, but, you know, something. Um, I don't know if even the, uh, in regards to the American Rescue Plan, those miscellaneous funds we could use towards possibly a grant writer that's going to specifically target funds or grants available to address some of those COVID-related challenges we have, maybe. On the other hand, we, are, we have expenses. And these, these are some of the um, challenges that, and also that they, they could be opportunities for the city that, that we are foreseeing within the next fiscal year. We have um, labor agreements. They are all coming um, to an end June 30th, 2021. So um, labor negotiations will definitely have an impact within um, our budget in the expense side for um, personnel cost. Um, this budget presented to you, it, it's balanced through uh, the continuation of freezing the positions of uh, a one dispatcher and one police captain. If our council decides to unfreeze those, any of those positions will definitely have an impact on our um, expense side of the budget. Um, and you saw we, we balance with a $2,000 surplus, so we'll definitely be tapping into the reserves. Yes. And so, uh, and so well, there was <clears throat> a little later in the, in the presentation, uh, we are incorporating one dispatcher and one police officer, and so we are keeping. What, there was there was there was two dispatchers and and one police captain and one officer that that were had freezing the positions. So right now we are uh, um, in this current budget. We have one dispatcher and one police officer, but we're recommending we we freeze one dispatcher and the police captain position. And then. Um just real quick, I know we have advocated for this. I know staff was working in regards to playground uh, replacement equipment for the Lucero Park. Is that something we're still working on? Yes. Yeah, okay. And I know we also, I appreciate that because I know that's a, definitely a safety concern and a need for that part of the community. Another um, thing that we also discussed, I don't know if it's going to be reflected here, or I'm hoping it is, it's the uh, some uh, improvements to the corner of Dwight and um, and the and Walnut um, corner there. I know we discussed this before as well. Thank you. Another area where we have identified um, some ch uh, potential challenges if if the um, city council decides to move forward with any community programs. Um, this budget does not have um, any funding authorized or appro appropriated for uh, a spay and neuter program, and we don't account right now for a traffic calming measure, um, meaning the uh, speed bumps that we wanted to place. So in the event that we, um, that we decide to move forward and put some money um, into any of these programs, that will mean that um, our $2,000 surplus will, will, will be diminished. But also keep in mind the council can look at the entire budget, whatever staff is recommending, and you can look at uh, adjusting other areas in order to meet those needs if you find those needs to be much more important than other needs. So that's up to the council discretion. So for instance, uh, under the Measure V, the traffic calming program, we've, uh, we talked about it and we have actually researched, we can use Measure V funds for that program. So council can allocate and we can specify a specific program, in this case, the traffic calming program, and allocate whatever amount of money you deem is uh, appropriate uh, to address some of those traffic calming needs over the course of this next fiscal year, okay? So that's, that's the way you can um, you know, move funding around based on your need. Yeah. 
So your, definitely, your don't have, then we won't have to use any of the general fund money, right? Correct. It'll be something from Measure V. Okay, so that is correct, or any of the gas tax money and all those all those funds that are you know programmed for for streets already. So that's one example. Under whether if you if you decided to implement the uh, you know put some money towards the spay and neutering program, we would look at other areas and reduce by a certain percentage and allocate money there. So it's up to you guys. Um, just real quick. So how much do we have an idea on how much in the exp expense section, how much do we have for uh, pension obligations? That's our next, um, that's our next section. We also have identified that you know, this this is definitely something that the city needs to like, needs to think forward. Pension obligations they they hover over <laughs> anything that it, that it, you know any kind of projection that we do. It is something that it, that we get fed from CalPERS, our pension uh, managing um, plan provider. So. There are some items that are out of our control per se because this uh, the pension management investment management it's it's done through call purse but at the same time as a city there are some steps that we can take take into account in order to mitigate in order to decrease the pension um, so liability we can, so we can go to the next slide. And I'll give you some, some historical information. So back in 2011, our OPEB liabilities was, uh, if I remember correctly, was like 5.8 million. So now our OPEB liability is like 6.7 million, if I remember correctly. So that's why, especially during those years where, where we have a little bit of surplus or uh, yeah, when we have a little bit of surplus, that's when it's really great, even if it's a small amount. That's why staff always recommends to put some money towards, you know, bringing down our OPEB liability. Even if it's $50,000, it's something. But uh, again, it's, when, when the budgets are tight, you know, it's really hard to, to set aside money for uh, rainy day fund or for OPEB or any, for that matter, any other program. But when, when there is a little more uh, revenue uh, and you have a little bit of carryover and stuff, it's always good to put some money towards your OPEB liabilities. And um, to answer also your question, uh, Council Member Moran, you can see column number four, our unfunded accrued liability. Um, we have four different pension plans here in the city, and the total of those four different plans is $6.8 million. That is the unfunded liability. That is our pension, li the, 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 the dollar amount that we need to cover. Now, the interesting part here is, as you know, uh, this is all managed by PERS, and of course, this is... Uh, this particular funding is, is, is um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's invested and you know they typically tell us you're gonna get a certain percentage of return, let's say a 7%. But if there's any dynamics in the market and there's something really weird that happens, if you look at that chart, that 6.8 liability can easily turn into a 11 or $12 million liability, you know? So it just depends. So if you might want to explain that a little further. Absolutely. Um, you can see here also in column seven, we, I, I included the prior year unfunded liability. It was at $6.4 million. Between last year and this fiscal year here, our liability grew $400,000. It shows a 6% growth just in Plain numbers. It was about four hundred thousand dollars, and it is because of that. I mean, the investment, um, the investment uh, leadership in Culpers, they come up with a certain um, return on investment on the portfolio, and at this at this rate, 
Um, what they project is that out of like all of the monies that they have in this pod, they're going to have a 7% return on investment. If anything happens in the market, in, in the portfolio, and those investments don't come up with a return of 7%, our liability just goes higher. So um, it's been talked about in call PERS that really a 7%, that no investment will ever give you a 7% return on, in, on investment. That a more um, fair and modest and more down to reality percentage, it's more like a 6%. But just talking about 6% here in our city, in, in, in Livingston, from $6.8 million unfunded liability, it would make our unfunded liability go up to almost $11 million. So it's very scary. I mean, like, it's scary to me to show, you know, like, to look at this number and say, oh, my gosh, you know, if I see a return on investment of 6%, my liability is $5 million more than what I have projected. We have many other cities that that liability becomes... 100 million, 400 million. So um, we, it, to some degree, we are fortunate because our funded ratio of 74%, it's, it's, it's really good. Many cities do not have a 74% funded ratio. But at the same time, that liability of $6 million, it's something that we need to just drive, yeah, cheap away, drive careful with that. Now, uh, let me just highlight why that's important. This is important for not only those who are currently working for the city, but this is also very important for those who retire from the city. Because if, you, if there comes a time that, uh, you know, expenses uh, are really over the top, then, then we can easily become a Stockton, a Riverside, San Bernardino, and the list goes on, where those people who are, especially those who are already retired, they're expecting a certain percentage on the dollar uh, return because of all the years that they put in the city, and the judge is going to decide on how much they're going to get, and it, it can easily be 70 cents on a dollar. And that's why it's, it's very important. Thank you. And with that, um, we'll take any questions on the general fund or um, if, if before we move on to our enterprise funds. Council, any questions? Again, at any time, we can go back to any section. So, but we would like to give everybody an opportunity to, at each section, but we can always come back to any section. Does anybody have any questions? Public? Go ahead. Good evening, Mayor, uh, Council. Uh, just one suggestion on the American Rescue Plan. I really, really think if it's uh, doable to really put that money towards infrastructure and water because as there's no need to know why that's the primary uh, importance to the city. Water is important and I think this may be a one-time uh, opportunity we shouldn't uh, uh, not take. Thank you. I don't hear any other questions. Go ahead. Continue. Uh, do we just speak up? Or? Do you have a question? Uh, yeah, I just had a statement. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, this is Dwight Lark of the uh, Cannabis Advocate here. Just uh, kind of shocked that uh, the cannabis opportunity isn't, uh, you know, looked at by the city a little bit more closely. 
Um, I know the city of Livingston uh, looks at the surrounding cities to sort of gauge what they might want to do. And uh, the city of Merced was saved by their cannabis uh, revenue um, during COVID. Uh, Atwater is hiring people from use of their cannabis uh, tax revenue. So I just really want to encourage the city to uh, find a way to, you know, explore that option a little bit closer. Um, cannabis is the largest cash crop in our state. So it, it, it just mind-boggling to me that we're not looking at the largest uh, cash crop in our state to try to find a way to monetize it for, for our benefit. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, guys. If we go back to slide 18, I want to say, is it, is there any way to get, I want to say it's 18 or 19, where we say that there's, um, we're doing one and a half officers for every thousand. I don't know if I'm doing the math wrong, but if we have 15,000 times 1.5, wouldn't we be at like 23 instead of 10? But again, I don't know where it says Livingston, number four, physical year officers, and it says 10. But if we're doing 15,000, just say 15.5 times 1.5, wouldn't that be 23 point something, 23.25 and not 10? So we wouldn't be at that 1.5, we would probably be at like 0 0.98 or 0 0.80 something. I'm not good at math, but simple math I'm pretty good at. Because if you look at 1.5, that would be times 10 would be 15. Um, yes, we are based on our personnel um, table. We have budgeted 10 police officers. Mm -hmm. So, and we have 15,000 population and the, um, the coverage it's per thousand residents. So we have taken the, um, the product of you know 15,000 divided by 1,000, that's 15.4 divided by the 10 officers, that's the coverage of 1.54. But wouldn't it be 15? If you do 1.5 for every 1,000, you're looking at three officers for every 2,000. Wouldn't you do, doesn't that make more sense? So if you have one point officer per every 1,000, say you have a population of 3,000, that would give you or a population of 2,000, that would give you three cops. So you do three cops for every 2,000. If you have 15 times that, it would get you at 23.25. If you, we all have cell phones, if you just simply pop up your calculator and put 15.5 times 1.5, it should give you 23.25. I just don't get where the 10's coming from, but if we're gonna keep it at that 10, then that percentage per officer per every 1,000 should be dropped down to 0.9 something comparable to the rest of the cities. So we would be the lowest in the county per population. Am I, am, am I confusing people or I'm just, am I, is that just simple math? Okay. I'm just saying if that could, I mean, I know this is our first workshop and everything, but if that could be corrected, either, I don't have a laser pointer, either this number would have to change to 23.5 or this number would have to change to 0.9 something. Would it be, I don't know, Does that make sense? I'm not confusing Does it make sense? Here. Does it make sense? Or? We'll look, we'll look into that. Because the resolution that. says 1.5 per thousand. Again, I'm just using simple math. If you just do 10,000 times 1.5, you would be at 15 cops, not 10. And if you're at 15,000 times 1.5, you're looking at 23.25. Got it. So we'll look into that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We're only counting police officers in this calculation. For the public's um, information, the resolution that the that's a 
th that is something that the council at the time back in 2005 decided that they that was the, their their goal was to have that type of coverage. So it's not like a state mandate or a federal mandate or any of that nature. It's just something that our council at the time decided that they were going to uh, meet that goal. Yeah, we'll, we'll make those changes. So, sorry, we didn't catch that ahead of time. Sorry. Next, we have our water, um, sewer, and sanitation funds. Um, this is, uh, these are charts that were presented in our um, budget, in our workshop for the rate study. So we can see that within the, the next fiscal year, the next five fiscal years, we are projecting that our expenses will definitely outpace the revenues that will be collected in our water fund, given that um, no changes are made into our um, into our, our water revenue structures, we are showing here some critical projects that have been identified in our rate study. Um, we show that um, out of the reserves in the general fund, we are going to. Um, we're going to do some uh, major projects for well eight, well nine, um, well 12, com conveyance treatment, um, and also the water line replacement phase four for Walnut, Davis, White, and North Main, and some park surface water irrigation. And we project that we will be looking into um, obtaining some loans for the um, well 14, 16, 13, and 17 um, plants. We can see here, this is from our rate study, um, that in order for us to meet the, re the requirements of meeting all of our expenses and our debt service and, um, and all of the projects that we need, we need to, um, our revenue needs to come in at, it's this red line here, it needs to start coming in higher. However, the current fees, the blue line here, do not support the current um, needs of the water fund. In the wastewater, we also show that in order, um, that our revenue definitely is outpaced by our expenditures very quickly. Um, we can see that here, um, year 21-22, we're showing a, uh, we are looking at a deficit in our sewer fund, and then the deficit just continues to um, increase given that our sewer rates remain the same. Within the debt, sir, um, I'm sorry, the rate study, uh, we show that the blue line here is the current fees. The green line increasing, it's the fees that are required or the revenue that it's required in order for the city to be able to meet all of the um, sewer fund um, needs as far as personnel, maintenance, and projects. And we can see that if this line remains flat, our sewer fund will not be able to keep up with the um, current requirements and needs for that fund. And then we have a five-year model as well for the sanitation department in which we are projecting a deficit in our 
fiscal year 21, 22. Um, and then if revenues remain the same within this fund, we also see how quickly the, uh, the fund will chip away from its reserves. This is from the rate study. The dark line here, the flat line, is the fees at the current level, and the blue and the lighter blue line. It identifies the revenue that is required from the fund in order to support all of its, the services that are provided in the fund. So we can see that at the current rate structure, our, our fund will not be able to pay for all of the expenses incurred in, this, um, in the sanitation fund. We have listed some of the um, balancing uh, recommendations for the enterprise funds. Uh, we have, um, it could be one of the items that we feel uh, will definitely leverage and mitigate the, um, the high increase in expenditures is to look into our user fees. Uh, we are currently in the, um, we are currently in, in the middle of um, working through our Prop 218 for the rate study. Um, our public hearing will be held. Um, it's scheduled to be held on June 15th, and staff recommends that um, council um, approves the rates recommended in our rate study. Um, consultation. Um, and then we also recommend that we start a new study um, early. We recommend that we start it again in 2013, 2023. Um, we also recommend that some of the monies that are going to be um, received through the American Rescue Plan, ARP, um, are used to mitigate some of the funds uh, projects. We have identified $1.9 million for the, um, in the water fund for the well 12 and um, $322,000 for a disc tractor um, equipment in the sewer uh, fund. And um, also, um, if we need to um, if we need to look into, we could like look into placing a hold on some of these capital projects. Um, however, these are many of the projects that are identified in our rate study. Those are projects that are just needed in order for, for the city to be able to provide um, water, um, water that meets state standards and sewer services that also meets those standards and we don't get in trouble getting fines from the state. And we'll take any questions. Is there any questions from the uh, council? Anyone on the phone? Anyone here in the public? Okay, so at this point in time, <clears throat> what I would like to do is um, just kind of open it up to the to the rest of the council because I know that there was some other items that were brought up, and again, these are items that you guys can look at funding and move around in the different funds if if there's no strings attached to the specific funding. So one of them, uh, of course, we talked about the uh, Measure V and the traffic calming program. If we can get a little bit of direction from council on uh, looking at allocating a certain dollar amount, or if you're even interested in allocating a certain dollar amount. Again, this is the first workshop, so it's not like it's final today, but at least staff can um, get a little bit of direction. And if council's saying, yeah, you know, we know a dollar amount, or we want staff to recommend a certain dollar amount, 
and you know set aside a specific line item for the uh, traffic calming program, then then staff can work on that and present it to council at the next workshop. So that's number one. Number two, uh, there's also been uh, some interest of looking at starting a canine unit here in town. And so we also want, you know, uh, this is something that our Mayor Pro Tem brought up, so we can talk about that a little bit further. Uh, also, our mayor brought up uh, improvements to that piece of property that the city owns that's designated for uh, public safety on the corner of the White and Walnut. And so he would like to make some improvements on that property. Um, again, I'm not suggesting that this is general fund money. This is not necessarily general fund money, but funds in that area, you know, doing some fencing, curbs, gutters, sidewalk. We're going after some grant fundings to do that. Uh, the spay and neuter program, of course, that Mr. Moran brought up. And let me see, am I missing anything? I think those are the, the, the big items. So this would be a great opportunity to just have a little bit of a discussion on that. Um, for me, I would just say if, I would recommend if you guys would um, just put some numbers together so that way we have a better idea. Okay. But we'll go ahead and. Um, we actually, let's, if you want, we can present a little bit because we did come up, we did do a little bit of homework and Vanessa can certainly share on, on, on what would be the initial cost and then some ongoing costs for a canine unit, and we can just do it now. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Or if you want me to just take it? Okay. So the, some of the preliminary costs that we came up, initial costs, and again, uh, some of these costs that we came up with for in the initial is about $80,000 for the canine unit, and for ongoing costs, we anticipate the estimate to be about half of that. And, uh, but we can certainly break that down even further and, and do a line item on each one, and then you guys can certainly provide some feedback. So for starters, that's kind of what we came up with, just a, a rough preliminary number. So we'll come back uh, at the next workshop with uh, uh, actual slide and then line item of expenses. Um, anyone on the council has any questions regarding that? Uh, yes, on, in regards to the um, traffic um, calming, speed bumps and stuff like that, probably what I would rather see is like some, some figures, some more real figures on what it would look like, considering some of the different options. So maybe, you know, option one, two, and three, or, you know, if we do this, it would cost this, if we do this, and then kind of like the benefits and, and some of the pros and cons. Uh, at least for me to kind of get a better idea and then kind of uh, when we come back to that with that look at the options primarily if if how much can we do to cover it from measure M measure V mm -hmm. mm, I'm sorry measure V yes so kind of what staff had in mind was to so just as an example and this is something that we talked about in the town hall and we're, we're certainly going to be bringing to council a traffic calming program, kind of the guidelines and, and criteria, but in terms of just funding so that you guys can think about it, we were thinking about uh, possibly about $60,000, and that $60,000 would be, uh, so folks, some of the individuals want to, in certain neighborhoods, want to put uh, some traffic uh, speed bumps, for lack of a better term, on those streets, and we anticipate that those cost about fifteen thousand dollars. So, if you ha if you address two or three neighborhoods, you know, sixty would disappear pretty quickly. And it doesn't necessarily all have to be for uh, speed cushions or speed bumps. Some can be uh, for other traffic calming measures, like you know, using radar, you know looking at uh, implementing some other thing and the traffic safety committee and working with the community members of those specific neighborhoods would come up with solutions and use that money and there could be money left over at the end of the year and we can roll it to the, the following year so it's just as a placeholder and that there would be funds 
to at least make some improvements to those areas. But, but we'll come back and, uh, and suggest, and then again, we will be bringing to council the traffic uh, calming program for adoption. Thank you, anyone else? Uh, would that end our workshop, Jose? Is that the? If there's no other questions, that ends our workshop. Thank you. Thank you. That will conclude the uh, workshop for today. And we'll be back in about five, ten minutes for our closed session.